Hey, how y'all doing? It's me, Chris. I'm back. Well, how you been, gang? How's your week? Mine has been incredibly busy. Absolutely insane. I got people that want pigs, but they don't want to come pick them up. I got deals that have already been made, and the guy is trying to just get me to continue feeding his pig for him. I swear, the degradation of our society is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Just trying to do just simple business. I don't take money for anything. I barter for everything that I do. So, you know, whatever barter deals are pretty simple. I get the stuff. They get their animal, whatever it is that they're getting. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But people can't even handle that. I got a guy, I got a 400-pound hog out in my pasture. He's the last of the pigs. My son's friend, I don't know what kind of acquaintance really, just some friend of his, said that he was going to come over and pay me to take the hogs. All right, the hog, one hog. Asked me how much I wanted for it, and I told him that I wanted 30 bales of hay for the pig. That equals out to about, well, depending on how much per bale, it equals out to about $150, which is a pretty good price for the pig. I'm not doing the processing. I'm not doing anything. I'm just selling him the pig. He's the last one, and it's just time for him to go. So 150 bucks, 30 bales of hay, will feed everybody else, the cow and the goats and the sheep and everybody else. So it, it's a good trade. But the guys, it rained last night. So now it's an uh, inconvenience to come and get the, the pig. I don't know. Anyway, enough of my psychobabble. It just is absolutely insane trying to deal with people because they are so far out there. There's no such thing as a business deal anymore. There's no such thing as honor. There's no such thing as any of those things. There, it doesn't seem like a man's word is good anymore. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. Well, gang, sorry about all that. It's been a, been a rough week. All right, we're going to be starting on chapter 21 in Numbers. So go ahead and get yourself something to drink. And we'll settle in here, all right? Did you see where the United States sent three carrier groups into the South China Sea? Three carrier groups. That's an enormous strike force. That's a huge strike force. And the Chinese have already got their one aircraft carrier in the South China Sea with 40 other ships. We talked about that. Uh, it was either Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday that we talked about that. But they've already got 40, 40 warships in the South China Sea. Now the United States has matched them with this three carrier group and you got to realize that there's all kinds of submarines in that area now it is locked and loaded guys <coughs> excuse me not only that but china has stationed their carrier killers right at either end at the east end and at the south end they've got their carrier killers so they're just setting this all up they're setting it up for world war three not only that but last night they had another chemical attack in syria now, the Russians let everybody know that these terrorists had chemicals. Let them know a month ago that these terrorists had chemicals. If you look back in the liked videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Or else, check out uh, Dave Hodges on the Common Sense Show. He's got some stuff about that. And so does um, Roy Potter, Lieutenant Colonel Roy Potter. He's got some stuff on that, too. So look up what they've got and uh, do your own investigation. Don't believe what I'm telling you. All I'm doing is I'm just opening the, the rabbit hole for you to follow. Um, you know as well as I do that they're going to blame this chemical attack on Assad. 
but Turkey's already been caught red-handed. Aragon's already been caught red-handed smuggling chemical war, chemical weapons into Syria. So, you know, let's put two and two together here. It just seems like deductive reasoning is out the window anymore. Nobody can figure out, put two and two together. It's because of the common core. You can't add two and two together anymore to make four. You have to count all the boxes and then divide by four and then multiply times. Dumbing down the country. So there's no, no individual thought anymore. But if you are able to use your brain still, it's obvious. It's obvious you can see what's going on in the Middle East. You can see what's going on in China. You can see what's going on all over the world. Ukraine, there's all kinds of stuff going on in Ukraine right now. There's like 75,000 troops that have been called up into Crimea. This is getting ready to happen, folks. It's getting ready to happen. They're getting it geared up. You ever play Risk? When you're a kid, you ever play Risk? You know before, if you play Risk or chess, you know that you put your pieces where you want them to be before you attack. And you've got to try to stay at least three or four steps ahead of your opponent. Well, that's what they're doing right now. They're placing this piece here and this piece there and this piece over there. And we'll put these ships over here. And Oh, but we're all still friends. Okay. Anyway. Just a lot of insanity, folks. Um, let's see. Texas and Arizona, their National Guard are on the border. Trump is threatening to pull our troops out of Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, but I can't see him doing it now in Syria because of this chemical weapons attack, so the deep state got him there. He's going to end up keeping the troops in Syria, but it'd be interesting to see if he pulls them out of, uh, out of Afghanistan with the poppies there. That'd be interesting. We'll see about that. I'm kind of guessing it's going to be the National Guard because let's think about this. Posse comitatus. Oh, what is that? Posse comitatus. That means that the United States military can't operate on the soil. Hmm. Interesting to see. Of course, the president has the power to uh, nationalize the National Guard, to federalize the National Guard. So there is really no need for our active military to be on the border, but there is a need for our active military to be here because of the fact that if the United Nations deems the border to be unstable and a problem, they can actually, Obama gave them the right to come in and interfere. So we might actually need our active military to fight off the UN and the Chinese and the Mexicans and the Salvadorians and the Cubans and anybody else who thinks they can come in through that south southern border, not to mention all the Chinese and uh, the Muslims up on the north border waiting to come in. Gang, we're in a real fix here. There is a genuine issue going on here, and there's going to be a lot of people that get killed because they got their head in the sand, because they ain't paying attention to what's going on. Everybody that's awake, anybody that sees these videos or is awake somewhere else, I don't care. Find your research somewhere. I don't care. Just do your research. It doesn't matter where you get it from. Use good sources and use good judgment where you're getting your sources. Do the homework. You know what's going on. Either that or you can sit at home with the remote in your hand drooling out the corner of your mouth and zombie fight on TV. Gee, that'll uh, get you a long way when they come pound your door down, burn your house, and kill your family. I know, pretty raw, huh? But it's the truth. This is the reality of what is happening. This is the truth. Believe it or not. I know it's a lot to swallow. I know. If it wouldn't have been for years and years and years and years of my research, I'd be freaked out too. 
I'd be totally freaked out. I'd be like, whoa, man, I can't believe this is going on. This is not real. This possible. I understand the position. I do. I'm, I really try to be patient with those that are just becoming awake or stubborn not to open their eyes. I really am, I try to be patient. But it's very difficult because it's like, come on, we got to go. We've got to go. We got to get this done. Let's go and do it. I don't know, man. I'm watching a movie. Oh, Idol's on. Eh. Okay, whatever. Those are the people I just, you know, I guess you guys are going to be fodder then. Just hold them off long enough that the rest of us can get away, all right? Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate your service. Like I said, gang, it's been a long week. Let's push this computer back a little bit. It's been a long week, and I have a lot of stuff going on. But right now, we're going to get Bible study going. Whoa, whoa, dropping stuff all over the place here. Wonderful. Making a mess. Oh, well. All right, gang. Let's get going on our Bible study. Let's open to Numbers. Chapter 21. Let's see how much we can get done here today. All right. Are you ready? Get a little drink of water. All right. Here we go. Chapter 21. Numbers. And when King Arad, the Canaanite, which dwell in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Now, you got to remember, Canaanites, they're giants. We've already, already talked about that previously. They're up against giants. Bad seed. That's why God wants them destroyed. The sons of the fallen ones. Yeah, we're getting ready to see that again, too. All right, verse 2. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. This chord is annoying. And he called the name of the place Hormah, which I think is in Jordan, Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God. Here we go again. And against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up? out of Egypt, to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth, loatheth, okay, loatheth this light bread. Complaining about eating the food of the angels, manna. Unbelievable. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. How many, how many miracles do they need to see before they actually get it through their thick skulls? Time and time again, it happens over and over and over. Nothing new under the sun is there. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he, held, when he beheld the serpent of brass, 
he lived. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched the Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth and pitched at Ajabarim in the wilderness, which is before Moab, toward the sunrising, so it's toward the east. Verse 12. From thence they removed and pitched in the valley of Zared. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Aaron, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coasts of the Amorites. For Aaron is Arnon, sorry, for Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, when he did what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon, Ar Arnon, yeah, and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and lieth upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Beer, 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 that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses. Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes digged the well, the nobles of the people digged it, by the direction of the lawgiver, with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matanea, and from Matanea to Nahi, Nah, Nahali, Nahali, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth into the valley that is in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward Jeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the water of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we pass we be past thy borders. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon to Jabbok even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites in Heshbon, and in all the valleys thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand even unto Arnon. Wherefore that they speak in Proverbs, say, Come into Heshbon. Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It hath consumed Ar of Moab and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab, thou art undone, people of Shemash. He hath given his sons an escape and his daughters into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon is perished even unto Dibon. And we have laid them waste even unto Nophoth, which reacheth unto Medaba. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and Moses sent a spy out, ja Jaazer, and they took the villages thereof and drove out the Amorites that were there, and they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og, to the king of Bashan, went out against them. 
he and all his people to the battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people and his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons, and all his people unto there was none left him alive, and they possessed his land. Chapter 22. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are around about us, as an ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at, all, at that time. He sent messengers before unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pithor, Pithor which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Preadventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the prince of Moab abode with Balaam. Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Preadventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent ye again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus say Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto very great honor. And I will do whatsoever thy sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall do, shall thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the prince, princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled, because he went. 
And the angels of the Lord stood in the way for an adventure, uh, adversary against him. Now he was riding up upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass, and turned her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel, angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there, I would there were a sword in mine hand. For now I would kill thee. And the ass said unto you, Balaam, am, I, am not I thine ass, which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? He said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get back, get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with all the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the prince of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto the city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? I am not able indeed to promote thee to honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that I shall speak. And Balaam went with Balak. And they came unto Kirjahath, Kir, Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. All right, gang, I'm going to stop there and we'll go on to chapter 23 on Wednesday then. Okay. It gives us a couple of chapters in today. Oh, gang. Ah. Be ready, guys. There's things that are happening really fast now. So be ready. Be on your guard. Not only that, but time is short. It could happen at any time now. We are wide open and ripe for World War III. We're also wide open and ripe for a civil war in this country. Save your soul.
simple. Very simple. Get on your knees. Ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Declare Jesus as your Savior. Then form a relationship with Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray about everything. Before you blow your nose in the morning, pray about it. Pray about everything. Talk to the Lord. Form a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you haven't started preparing yet, you are really running thin on time. If you don't have food, water, a weapon, ammo, practice with that weapon. I don't know if you're going to make it. I can't guarantee anything. Only the Lord knows those things. I can't help you. But the Lord tells us to prepare. So get ready. It's coming down, gang. Try to help your neighbor. Try to get your neighbor to see what's happening. Love your neighbor. Love him enough to tell him what's coming and see if you guys can work together without beating each other up. I know, greed. Everybody wants to try to get the upper hand. Whatever. It's just angry, hateful, ridiculous. Pray to Jesus. Pray for your neighbor. Love your family and help somebody in need. There's a lot of people right now that are homeless. A lot of people. A lot of families that are homeless. Try to do something to help them out. Help them up. If you need work done around your house, talk to the churches in your neighborhood. The pastors know who it is that's homeless. They know. See if you can locate a family and help them up. All right, gang. That's all I got for today. It is absolutely insane, everything I've got going on. So I'm going to get going and take care of my business. Y'all have a good rest of your weekend. Stay away from the TV. Don't turn that stupid thing on. Pull your cable out. Take your... Hey, here's something for you. Do something that nobody else in your neighborhood does. Take the satellite dishes off of your house. There's something for you to do. Get rid of that TV. Anyway, we'll talk to you all on Wednesday. Okay? God bless. Bye.